This video is sponsored by Skillshare. What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Anik, I'm a classical pianist. Actually, I should also say something in German. Yo Leute, was geht ab? <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, I guess you clicked on this video because you don't want to practice. <laughs> and still want to sound like a pro. So you're perfectly right here. However, you should be aware of, I'm not going to tell you that you can suddenly play much faster without practicing. You want to play faster? You need to practice. You want to have more control over the keys? You need to practice. Anyway, these tips and tricks that I'm going to share today are going to be much, much easier to include in your playing without a lot of practice. It does not mean that you don't need to practice at all, but you will see an improvement like in just one day at least. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to support me and this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You'll find the link in the description box. Something that can give your playing much more contrast and makes it so much more enjoyable and exciting for the audience is to create more dynamics. So there are two different ways to create more tensions for the audience. One thing is dynamics and the other thing is sound color. Sound color is much, much more different to create. Like you need much more experience and much more control over the instrument. So the thing that is much easier to do is to create more contrast through dynamics. If you just play on one dynamic level, everything sounds a little bit gray and at some point, you know, the audience is just a little bit bored. <laughs> Even if the tension is increasing, it sounds like nothing is really happening because the dynamics is not changing. If you are not on the level to have so much control over sound color and stuff, dynamics is really the first step to go into this direction. With dynamics you can create so many contrasts and so many figures just because the difference between forte and piano is so clear and so big. So tip number one, check your dynamics, create more contrast through bigger changes in dynamics. I would go through the whole piece, checking through everything that the composer wrote dynamically into the piece. So you get an overview and more structure in your playing. And after knowing this, you can get like a much bigger range in your playing instead of, you know, just playing everything on one level. Tip number two, use less pedal. <laughs> like so many times we're just pushing down the pedal as if our foot is a stone. <laughs> what I like to do is to practice a lot without any pedal at all, because it's always much easier to increase the amount of pedal than decreasing the amount of pedal later on. And there's a little trick that I learned over the years and I'm sure that I'm not the only one who is doing it like this. Like if we're just, you know, playing without pedal but leaving our foot on the pedal, there is a high chance that we still push down the pedal accidentally because we are used to do this and because our ear wants to do it. If you put it next to the pedal, it's already better, but still it can happen that your foot runs back, it's like a zombie and it has its own will and it gets up and pushes down the pedal and damn it, we use the pedal again. So what I like to do is to put my foot actually underneath the pedal so it's trapped there. It's a little bit weird, but you know, we are all weirdos. <laughs> Just for me to practice, I definitely don't do it on stage. But when I'm practicing and I want to make sure that I really don't use any pedal, I can concentrate only on what I'm doing on the keys, I like to do this so I don't have to think about what my foot is doing there on its own wheel. <laughs> Does your foot also have its own wheel? Tell me in the comments down below. If you are interested to learn more things about how to do something like a pro, please check out today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands and thousands of inspiring classes about like pretty much everything, like from cooking to drawing and painting to photography to even music and music theory. What I really like about Skillshare is that you can find classes for basically any skill level. For me personally, as I'm filming and editing all the videos here on YouTube and Instagram on my own, I'm really interested in like how to improve my skills here. Right now I'm going through a class by Chris Bruker about creative in-camera transitions and I really enjoy to follow his class because he's breaking down the big subject into a lot of small subjects so it feels like you can go through this class very fast. Now there is a special offer of Skillshare. The first thousand of my subscribers who click on the link in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So don't waste any time, go and hit the link in the description box. And now back to the video. And the last tip is play 
until the end. In so many pieces, we feel like we need to rush to catch up to the next note, especially at the endings of fast passages with scales or fast runs. We tend to rush, especially like the last three, four notes, and it's very not understandable for the audience. It's like as if I'm talking and the sentence at the end is just so fast spoken that you can't really understand the last two words. It will give the audience the impression that you are insecure, which you are, obviously. <laughs> you know, just make that point until the end and then continue. Give yourself the time because we actually do have enough time to catch up to the next note. And if you feel like you do not have enough time, well, there are two reasons. The first reason is that it's psychologically, like your, your brain just thinks it's like this and then it, you know, forces you to rush instead of just calming down and give yourself confidence to play until the end and like give yourself time. But the other possibility is that your tempo is just way too fast and you're really just not able to catch up to the next note in time because the tempo is just too fast. So just using a tempo that's a little bit lower than before will already save you so much, you know, craziness in your head. <laughs> like it will already bring down your stress levels so much while you play. Let me show you a little example here. Okay, so here we have an example. This is out of Mozart's D minor concerto. And you can see this ending here. This is very typical for us to start to rush because it's fast and we see there's a little jump here and we are scared to not catch up with this in time if we don't rush here. So especially this mm. note, is important to create the connection to the next note. Okay, so <laughs> I was trying to do it in the wrong way to show you, but uh, the fingering that I'm using is not letting me to rush. So yeah, here's a tip. You can use a fingering that is calming you down basically. As you can see, there is a lot of change in fingering and a lot of like movement created through the fingering that I'm using, which is not letting me rush so much. Like I'm forced to calm down and play it till the end. Otherwise it's not possible for me to play. So this was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you sound like a pro now. <laughs> Let me know in the comments, which of these three tips help you. What other tips would you suggest? Write it in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to support me and this channel, please check out the Patreon and the merch. Thanks a lot for your support. We'll see you in the next videos. Bye. So, so, so. Hallo, hallo. Hallo, hallo, hallo. Ah, ich habe das Licht noch nicht eingestellt. Das Licht, äh, das Licht ist noch nicht an. Wo ist das Licht? Wie sieht das aus? Das sieht scheiße aus. Aha. Aha.